truth. It's like Peter saying, he says, we have a more sure word of prophecy to which we do well to pay attention. Mm -hmm. We're already seeing these things fulfilled. Amen. Some of these promises we're not seeing afar off. Mm -hmm. Like the new birth. Or like, how about this one? They shall be willing in the day of his power. Is everyone in this room willing? Mm -hmm. That's a part, you're partaking of that mm -hmm. promise. And it, mm -hmm. yes. it encourages our further faith in the promises that are yet to be. Mm -hmm. God Amen. is faithful. Amen. Amen. You can see that this, this truth that we're in Christ, this, now you, when, you, when you see that rightly, then later you see we're going to be glorified together with them. You see, this makes perfect <coughs> sense. God's not, and God's not going to separate us on the day of judgment. Amen. We're already in Christ Jesus, right. so we're going to be glorified together. That's right. And so there's, there's never going to come a time when he's going to leave you. Amen. Because you didn't leave him. Amen. Brother Fred? Along with what Brother Levain was saying a minute ago about focusing on man causing, you know, the promises of God to be suffocated, um, I think it's not, it wouldn't ever be said, but a lot of the preaching today um, is really trying to get the flesh to believe God's promises. Mm -hmm. That's a very abject way of saying it, mm -hmm. but that's really what's happening. It's trying to cause man uh -huh. to understand, mm -hmm. and that it cannot happen because God has designed his promises in such a way that the flesh cannot that's believe right. them. That's right. It, yes. it, it calls to a deeper yes. part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It seems like a you know it seems like a simple thing. But mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, because God has vested invested more in His promises than in His commandments, and it, it might sound like that's not accurate, but it is. I mean, the commandment was added because of transgression. It got the purpose of God was not to have. <clears throat> there was somebody that started a a, a group. I won't. I I can't dignify it with the term church, but they called them the uh, Kingdom of Heaven Commandment Keepers or something like that. <clears throat> God did not. God did not invest Himself in salvation just to have commandment keepers, an external uh, surface righteousness. You know, even if that were like the Apostle Paul, a bunch of pre-conversion Apostle Pauls. You know, where it looked like you had done everything that God required, a bunch of unprofitable servants doing only what we were commanded to do. His, his purpose was further than that. The commandment can't bring us that far. Promises bring us further than commandments. God has invested more in promises. Promises deal more with the essential part of man than a commandment does. A commandment reveals whenever we are unlike God, but a promise calls us to be joined to the and testify to the truth and, and work of God. And so it's a greater transgression to reject the promises than it is to reject the commandments. Sister Barb and then Sister Melissa. I was just thinking about the passage in Galatians speaking about the promise and the covenant of the law promise was given first. Mm -hmm. The promise that's was given right. to Abraham. That's right. The law that's was right. added after mm -hmm. that. That's right. right. The promise was first. Mm -hmm. um, commandments make you think about what you can't do. The promises mm -hmm. make you think about what can happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or what will happen. Let me change it. What will happen. Amen. In both of these, God, uh, 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 it's forced upon us to, to, uh, to side with one to either side with what God has said or to side against it. There's no neutral in this. God presents it, and then we must either receive or reject it. Brother Given? Now here's, here's a wonderful thing about, about the New Covenant. Now some of them, we can't be perfect. Now you can say, yes, you can be absolutely spotless and perfect. Mm -hmm. At the point you confess your sin and your sin is forgiven, at that point... Mm -hmm. You are spotless. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to believe that. Mm -hmm. See, so God has, you want to throw that into the scenario that at the point that you sin, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. See, Amen. We confess our sin is faithful, and at that point, you're clean. Mm -hmm. Amen. Boy, praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Brother Aaron. With, with regards to our righteousness, the promises and the commandments are. They're, they're competitors. Yeah. You, you either come to God on the basis of what you do, or you come to God on the basis of what He's done. <laughs> but with regard.
regards to the new birth, in the new birth, it's actually the new creature harmonizes the commandments with the promise. <laughs> and so when, when you're born again, it, this, this doesn't nullify all the, all the commandments because Jesus said it, it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one jot or tittle, one dot on the I or one cross on a T from the law for the law to pass away. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that grace doesn't take us a bypass around the law. The, but right. the, the commandments actually, we are actually brought into a union Amen. with the commandments mm -hmm. and a harmony with the commandments, not just judiciously, but rather in nature. That's right. And so he gives us in, in, he gives us a nature like his own. And so then when, when the Lord says, thou shalt not covet, well, then you find you, you actually have a heart that yeah. doesn't want to covet. That's right. That's right. So your new, your new nature actually make, puts the it actually puts you within reach of the commandments. So yeah. And this is, not, this is not to say that, that you become, there's always religious extremes anywhere you go. But somebody that, that heard what I just said would say, oh, so you think you've reached a state of perfection. Well, no, that's, that's not what I've said. But I am in the, I'm headed in that direction. Yes, right. Amen. Okay, now see, the, under the new covenant, which is the bringing in, of the promise that God has promised, the Savior, uh, and the re, the re, His re, uh, redeeming us from the power of sin, and imparting to us life from above. All right, we're put into Christ. This is part of the promise that has been realized by us, and there's yet more to come. But this this has been done. It's a foundational work. How could someone, do you, I mean, how ridiculous is it to even think to say that someone could be in Christ, operating according to the spirit of Christ, and sin? I mean, the, the whole thing is ridiculous. Right. If you get right down to it, the people who fight with this, the commandments and the promise and, and grace and law and all this stuff, they just haven't seen what it is to be in Christ. When Jesus came, he fulfilled the law. This is what we're being brought into. So does that mean that we have a free pass to be antinomian? That we can be lawbreakers because we're in Christ? You can't put those two together. That's if, right. As you walk with Christ, you will do the works of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You will think the thoughts of Christ. You're going to... We are being conformed to him. He isn't just he isn't just putting like his brand on us and saying, now go run where you want. We are we're being this, this is a union closer than anything earth can really achieve. This is a spiritual union. This means that essentially, down intrinsically, the real you, the thing that actually defines you, is being this new creature is like the one who begat it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. This new creature that is born from above cannot sin. Now, where do you find lawbreaker in that? Where do you? Right. You got to go back to the flesh to get to where lawbreaking right. happens. Mm -hmm. So, like Brother Aaron was saying, there it's it's like the law is contained in and fulfilled within the compass of the promises. Mm -hmm. The promises are like this, and the law was a part within that. Precisely, mm -hmm. yeah. the apostles' argument here in Romans 3, 4, 5, mm -hmm. 6, 7, That's 3, right. 8. Mm -hmm. and he says there at the end of what we call chapter 3, Do we then nullify the law through no, faith? May it never be. On the contrary, we establish a law, and then he continues That's to right. talk about being That's justified right. by faith. According to grace, That's given right. the promises by faith, according to grace. That's this right. This is what God has intended. This is what He's showing. Us. And this yeah. is this is the rationale behind the apostles' reasoning on this truth: yeah. why the saints are to live holily yeah. and blamelessly externally, yeah. because inside this is what we are, Brother Ricky. Yeah. 